for the OCR Festival of A-Level Maths. My name is Stephen Walker. Um, I'm one of the subject advisors in the maths team at OCR. I'm currently working on the redevelopment of the OCR um, GCE Maths and Further Maths. Uh, prior to joining OCR in July 2014, I was teaching in secondary mathematics in the UK and also overseas and have held head of department positions in the past. Um, I originally studied materials engineer, engineering but moved into education after an enjoyable four years as a volunteer maths and science teacher with BSA. Um, so I understand all the concerns that you may have um, and hopefully I can answer any questions um, and make you feel confident um, moving into the, um, the new reformed qualification. Um, OCR have two accredited maths and further maths specifications. Um, this afternoon I will be talking about the OCR Spec A um, maths specification and the sample assessment material um, throughout this session. So just first of all focused on the specification. Um, in the reform, um, AS and A-level maths now includes a statistics and a mechanics. Um, and there will be a little bit of statistics and mechanics in both um, the AS and the A-level. Um, in terms of the pure content, for the full A level, it's roughly um, the same as the current C1 to C4, um, but changes in the applied um, in statistics, there's more interpretive um, nature, um, less of the calculations, um, there's working with a large data set, um, and there is hypothesis testing um, in both AS and the A level. Um, the mechanics, um, there's an emphasis on the application of vectors and calculus, thus working with forces and Newton's laws. In terms of content size, the statistics is about the same size as an applied um, stats unit. Similarly, the mechanics, the size, of a mechanics unit, um, but it's not just S1 and M1 um, because it does have to go up to the full A-level level of demand. Um, so roughly speaking, sort of S1, parts of S1 and S2, parts of M1 and M2. Um, depending on the specification that you're delivering at the moment, possibly going into three or four of those um, applied content. Um, decision maths has gone from A-level maths. Um, that was a requirement um, from all the consultations, um, but it will feature in further maths. Um, and my colleague will We'll be talking about that when he's talking about the further math specifications later on this afternoon. Um, in terms of the exams, um, our AS qualification H230 is made up of two one and a half hour exams, each 75 marks. Uh, the first paper is pure and statistics, the second paper pure and mechanics and it's split into a section A pure 50 marks and then a section B applied 25 marks. In the full A level H240 we've got a first paper which is a pure maths paper um, and then we've got a pure and statistics and a pure and mechanics. Um, and again, they are split into a section A pure and a section B applied. 
and they are split in a 50-50. So we do have about the same sort of um, coverage as we've got in the current pure to applied um, over the full A level. In terms of the amount of assessment time we've got, um, Ofqual did not state a minimum assessment time, um, but I think all the awarding organisations have hit on the same approximate timings in comparison with the other reform day levels that have already started. In further maths, actually, we have slightly more than that three hours and six hours split, um, but that's to allow for a reasonable length of exams for each of the options. There won't be a formula book for um, A-level maths. Um, any formula that students will need will be in the front of the exam paper um, because we won't need to provide all the statistical tables, which I will come to when I look at the statistics. When you look at uh, specification, um, first thing to note is that we've actually got a whole section on assessment command words. Um, these are set out clearly in the specification and the idea is that they can be used as part of teaching um, so that you can prepare students for the type of wording that will come up in the exams. Um, as always, general advice, students should always show um, they're working to gain partial credit. Um, however, um, these assessment words will make it clear to students when just answering, um, just writing an answer will not earn the full credit. There is no non-calculator paper in the reform. The students may use their calculator for any question. However, some of these command words will help provide clear indication that mathematical justification is needed. Command words like show that, determine, and in this question you must show detailed reasoning can be considered key phrases for students to look out for. Hence, has been used to signal that working already done in an earlier part of the question will be useful and hence will save some time. Um, hence and otherwise will similarly signal this, um, but often reflects that there are alternate methods um, that could be used, um, including more efficient and um, further maths techniques. So students will not be penalized if they use an alternate method. Um, if it's more appropriate um, for their level of ability. Um, the other key difference with the way that OCR has taken the content from, from the consultations and the DFE subject criteria is that we have stripped down the document and then rebuilt it um, and first of all, we've got a clear distinction between the AS stage one learners um, and then showing the progression for the stage two additional knowledge in order to make up the full A level. And the, um, the further math spec has a similar structure. So here's a page from the, the core content. Similarly, the next section on statistics and then the mechanics content in section three. Um, and it, all the way through, we've got clear exemplification in order to support teachers and delivering the content for their students. As part of the reform, um, as well as the, the content, the techniques, um, there's a requirement to include some overarching themes 
Um, and these overarching themes, um, first one, mathematical argument, language and proof, that pretty much ties in with the assessment objective two, um, and then the overarching theme two, mathematical problem solving, and the overarching theme three, mathematical modeling, tie in with the assessment objective three. Um, full details of the overarching themes can be found in the DfE documents. Um, but how we've addressed this in uh, assessments is a question from the A-level H240 paper three, uh, where we've got the show that, and you can see students will be expected to show some mathematical reasoning um, in order to get their answer um, and to gain full, cred full credit. This AS question um, with the command word in this question, you must show detailed reasoning there is a bit of problem solving. Um, they have to recognize that they can use the trig identity. Um, one of the things with problem solving is it's the student has to make the link. Um, there can't be any um, scaffolding in the question that directs the student in a certain um, solution method. In terms of the overarching theme three, um, being able to evaluate mathematical models is a question from the A-level H240 paper two, um, where students have to comment on a mathematical model that's been pro proposed. I briefly mentioned the assessment objectives. These are very similar to the objectives given in the, the reformed GCSE 9 to 1 content, um, but obviously taken up to an appropriate A level standard. So at A level 1, the using and applying standard techniques, um, can you use tri trig identities? Do you know the um, Newton's um, laws? Um, and then the AO2 and AO3, um, as you can see, very similar proportions for the maths and further maths. The variation in AO2 and AO3 um, in further maths is to take into account the different optional routes that students may um, be following. In terms of how this looks on, on the assessment papers. Here's a, a question which is just purely AO1, um, H240, paper three, uh, mechanics problem. Um, although there are different methods students could use, um, the different methods are basically the same method, just the different way it may have been taught. Um, so that wouldn't be a case of the student making a, a decision. So it's um, fairly routine. Whereas this question using vectors, um, again, show that. Um, there is the need, because the answer has been given, um, that students have to show some AO2, some mathematical justification for how they get those answers. And this question I've mentioned, there is a bit of um, decision making, a bit of problem solving. 
and that can be in the AS as well. Um, so we've got the command word determine, um, so some clear work in, needs to be done to show why the calculations are being done, and it's problem solving because there's no structure within the question directing learners that what they have to do is the differentiation. Um, as you can see, the mark scheme gives a suggestion, but it shouldn't be considered as the only prescriptive um, method that students could use. Um, it's just highlighting the key steps um, of what the examiners are going to be looking for when they are marking this paper. So one of the key changes is the requirement that we need to assess the use of technology. Now in class, um, there's lots of um, software that you could use, spreadsheets, um, technology like GeoGebra or Autograph, um, but in the exam, we are just talking about a calculator. Um, either a scientific calculator or a graphical calculator. And in the development, um, we've been very focused on making sure that students with a graphical calculator wouldn't have an unfair advantage, um, or if they've got a scientific calculator, they wouldn't have a disadvantage. Um, but there is the requirement that students should be using that calculator technology appropriately. So for example, here's a vectors question, and as students are working through this question, then they're going to develop um, a quadratic equation. You can see in part three, there's a quadratic um, to solve, um, very standard GCSE level, um, a lot of students would actually solve this in their head, um, but there's no reason why they couldn't either solve it on their calculator um, or if they have done it manually, check their answer. Um, and you can see in the mark scheme, we've got a BC for by calculator. Also the fact that these um, modern scientific and graphical calculators will evaluate um, calculus. They will do differentiation, they will do integration. Um, so here's a question um, on the AS paper where in the first two parts, part one and part 2A, um, students are going to have to show that they can use the mathematical techniques, they can do it manually. But in Part 2b, there's no reason why, having identified that they need to do integration, why they couldn't use their calculator. And the question has been carefully written um, to make sure that students are demonstrating that they understand how their calculator works, um, deliberately picking a region on the graph which crosses the x-axis, so they need to take into account how um, how their calculator works. Um, you'll notice there is a special consideration, one mark, if they did just type it into the calculator because they are demonstrating that they understand that it is integration, but to get the full mark, um, they could just write the answer um, if they've just typed everything into their calculator, um, but this is one of the times when it's good practice for students to show they're working um, because if they did um, type something in um, by mistake, if they'd written down negative but then they'd actually done addition, um, then at least they would get the method marks um, and the accuracy for actually showing that they're working out the area above and the x-axis between the limits of 1 and 2, and below the axis between 2 and 5.
is another question which leads into using um, the integration function. Here it's got, in this question, you must show detailed reasoning. Um, it's important um, that students realize this is not a restriction on using their calculator, um, but it's an indication of the amount of working they need to show. Um, so they could use their calculator at every step of the process, but they must show what those steps are. And because of the way that these calculators work, it had they just tried to solve this just on the calculator, um, they wouldn't get all the marks because they wouldn't get um, an exact answer um, because the calculator would have just given a, a decimal um, answer. Numerical methods is clear area where um, the iterative function on their calculator will be useful. Um, using the answer recall function. And again, part one of this question, students have to show that they understand how Newton Raphson actually works. Um, but in part two, they've got an equation to work from. They're just expected to be able to use that iterative formula. Um, and if they were to type in the numbers from scratch each time, they're going to be penalised um, time-wise, even though they will get the right answer. So it's the efficient use of their calculator. Another big change um, in terms of statistics is not having the cumulative distributions. Um, in A-level maths, students are going to be expected to use their calculator for binomial distributions and normal distributions. And in further maths, this will extend into Poisson distributions as well. Um, it should be noted that any calculator that has normal and binomial will also have um, Poisson. You can see from the um, mark scheme, um, this is the AS23002 paper two, that what we're looking for is clear statistical reasoning. Um, we know that finding the value will be done on the calculator, so it's interpreting what that calculated value actually means. And then for AS, there's binomial in the A-level with normal, normal and binomial. Um, it's important to remember that the full A-level covers the whole course. Um, so just because binomial is on the AS, it does not mean that it would not be assessed as part of a synoptic um, full A-level examination. But here's an example of the normal distribution um, on the A-level paper. And again, the finding the statistical distribution value will be found on the calculator, but the, the majority of the marks are for setting up the statistical reasoning at the at the start of the question and interpreting that calculated value at the end. Another big change in the reform is the large data set. Now the main idea of the large data set was for the exam boards to provide something that would be useful for teachers 
as a teaching resource in the classroom. Um, by definition, the large data set is going to be too big to have um, printed out in the exam. So students will not have access to the large data set in the exam. Um, they'll either have some summary data or they'll have a small set um, or subset of that data within, within a question. Um, they are not going to be expected to spend a lot of time entering data into their calculator. The key thing is that students will have seen this large data set, they'll understand the context, so we don't have to have pages of um, introduction to a question that deals with this data. That doesn't mean that every statistics question will use the large data set. Some of the questions will use some of the, um, the terms or the data from the large data set. And the important thing is that students will gain a material advantage um, because they are familiar with the context of the large data set. And it's important that um, you do use the large data set um, in class um, so that your, your students are familiar um, with that data. Um, there's not going to be a large number of questions that couldn't be answered if the student had never seen the large data set, but in order to prepare your students um, well, um, they are definitely going to have an advantage if they had seen the large data set and worked with it in class. Now, working with it could be as a uh, projected front of the board and um, question and answering um, and demonstrations on the, the teacher's um, computer um, using the projector, or it could be students working with the large data set in their independent study or at home, um, which is why we have um, provided the large data set as an Excel spreadsheet and then Excel spreadsheets, that data can be converted um, for use in a graphical calculator, in a statistical software, um, or it could be worked with directly in Excel. So the large data set that we've got for the OCR specification is census um, data from 2001 and 2011, um, looking at methods of travel to work, um, data collected from local authorities. Um, so a key thing is students understanding what is actually meant by a local authority. So here's a question from the AS statistics paper. Um, so question, it's using some of the data. It's not a list of values. It's actually converted into a scatter diagram. Um, so students that had worked with the data will be familiar with the data being presented in that form. Actually, part one um, is just a general um, assessment of knowledge of uh, a scatter graph. It could have been any type of um, data used. It just so happens to be the large data set that's been used for this question. However, in part two, um, there is an expectation that students will have gained their material advantage because they'll be familiar with the vocabulary and the context that they've gained using the data set in class. Um, knowing that within that large data set there are distinct subgroups with common characteristics, 
understanding what the local authority is and how there are different types of local authority, some being urban, some rural and some a lot more mixed um, and how that will influence um, the travel to work data. Um, and as I said, it allows questions to be set that go into much more detail than would be possible if we had to explain all that vocabulary as part of the question that students would have to read through during the exam. So we will be running some webinars um, on using technology and teaching statistics, which will go into much more detail on this. Um, but the idea that having got your scatter diagram, um, slight change to scatter diagram, what I've got here is a, a bubble chart. Um, so I've got the, the two variables that do the, the scatter diagram, but then I've put a weighting third variable, um, and by changing the weighting of, on just one of the items, um, it will highlight that one particular um, data point. So you can actually look at which, which data points are the um, outliers, or where a specific um, data point fits within the, um, the scatter diagram. Looking at the support that OCR will be offering, as well as these webinars and CPD events coming up, um, we've got a teacher teaching order framework which looks at both maths and linking it in with further maths in order to help teachers plan for a co-teachable maths and further maths um, program of study. It is a generic solution looking at all four of the options for further maths um, and it shouldn't be taken as a week by week guide. It is a starting point for developing a scheme of work which is bespoke for your um, situation based on the number of teachers that you have, the number of lessons you have per week, um, the, the strengths and weaknesses of your students, but it does show clearly um, the order of teaching so that especially leading into further maths, um, topics that the further maths builds upon from maths, um, you're not teaching them in the wrong order um, and having to do a lot of additional teaching before you cover the, um, the further maths when they're going to be seeing it um, later on in maths. Using the um, teaching order framework, we are putting together the scheme of work builder um, which has all the items from the specification um, which you can put in either using the um, teaching order framework or much of what you've been doing currently um, and planning your scheme of work um, putting in your resources and your notes. Once you've worked on the scheme of work builder you can then download that to a Word document and then you've got that um, to share across the department. Um, we will be putting on delivery guides, um, links to useful resources, both resources that we are developing as OCR but also um, links to resources that are freely available on the internet. So we're going to try to do some of that falling through the excellent stuff that you can find um, but saving you a bit of time so you don't have to go through all the resources that have been published um, on TES, on STEM, on Enrich. In order to help um, developing
um, in order to help you um, develop um, tra transitioning from the mapping doc transitioning from the reform qualification to the um, the new new specification we've got mapping documents which show where the content has come from um, because there is a little bit of sort of C3 or C4 content that is now on the AS um, and on the applied content we have um, although primarily the content has come from the M1, M2 or S1, S2 there is a little bit that's come from S3 and S4 um, and we're doing these mapping documents again for the further math spec um, to help help you work out where it's come from so that all those resources that you've been using um, you can see where they fit in to the new specification um, there's a question that's just come through about how long is each session in the teaching order framework um, as I said um, it has been designed as a as a starting point it doesn't it's not designed as you must teach this in week one and it will take four hours um, it is a starting point we have tried to cover about there are 25 sort of nominal weeks which is a lot less than you would have um, available to teach um, so there is the flexibility for you to be able to with your cohort in mind where you would need to spend a little bit extra on some topics or maybe not quite so long on other topics We're producing um, check-in tests, um, both topic check-in tests and section check-in tests, um, which have questions, um, and we're writing them to have the 10 questions, five questions that will look at AO1, um, and five questions that will look at the AO2 and AO3 and the overarching themes. Um, they're not exam questions um, but they are questions that address um, the content and the changes in the content um, and they are work solutions we haven't provided a mark scheme um, but they're work solutions so that students could use them to um, self-assess um, or you could go through um, in class um, to identify and solve any um, misconceptions that they may have. We're also putting together lesson elements um, on the website at the moment. You'll find some lesson elements. Um, that there's one on um, manipulating thirds. Um, there's also some good lesson elements that, that are linked to the uh, um, large data set and again there's some notes um, for teachers um, some key teaching points and then there are the worksheets for students to work through um, with solutions um, to go through that and they're not this is the lesson for this topic they are suggestions of things that you might like to try um, as part of um, a lesson um, and type of ideas that have been suggested in the lesson elements um, you could then think you could develop them for other parts of the um, of the content we've got um, exam builder is coming online um, which will have um, questions taken from the legacy um, papers um, that have been mapped onto the new um, specification um, and we will be producing practice papers um, and these practice papers will be written 
specifically for the new specification. They are not going to be practice papers made up of old, um, old legacy questions. They are being written by the same uh, writing team that will be producing the live papers. In terms of textbooks, um, Cambridge University Press will be producing books for both maths and further maths. And also Hodder um, will be producing books for both um, the OCR Spec A and the OCR um, Spec B, the MEI Spec. A couple of useful um, websites. We've been working very closely with MEI. Um, although we have two separate specifications, um, the spec A and then the spec B, which is the MEI spec, and there's been a lot of cross pollination of ideas um, and the resources they have um, are good support in general for A level maths. Underground Maths, um, Enrich, um, and we've also um, recommend um, graphing technologies. Um, so GeoGebra is a good free resource, um, or there's Autograph or Cabri if you have um, that software in your school or graphical calculators, um, so that students can investigate um, the content um, in class and in independent study. And another uh, um, website I've just included here, the RISPs, um, they've been, I've used the, um, the activities here quite a lot when I've been teaching A-level maths. Um, and with the reform going to the linear qualification, um, there's some good um, activities that get students thinking and bringing together different areas of the, of the new specification. For more information, um, you can contact me or another member of the maths team at OCR Maths. Um, we do produce um, regular podcasts um, or give us a call. Um, to find out more, log on to the OCR uh, website, onto the maths page. Um, I'm assuming you've um, seen our advert for the Festival of A-Level Maths. We've got the conference actually on Friday at the Emirates, um, where we'll be doing, um, going into a lot more detail face-to-face some practical examples. And we're also going to be running some CPD events um, across the, the end of this term around the country. Um, you can sign up on the CPD hub. And let us know, sign up um, for Keeping up to date when we publish new resources, um, share discussions, find out about um, the new blogs that we we post um, when we're answering. If we, if a question comes in, um, quite often we'll respond directly um, to the person who's asked the question, but then we'll use that as the basis um, for a blog if it's an issue that looks like it could be explored further and would be useful to share. So hopefully um, this whirlwind tour of the, um, the Spec A A-level maths has been useful. Um, are there any, any other questions that I could answer at the moment?
Right. Seems um, quite a lot to take in. Um, feel free to um, drop me an email um, if something comes up in the next few days. Um, this this will be um, this presentation will be available um, online to download, so that you can share the full presentation or parts of it um, with your colleagues. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the near future at one of our face-to-face -face events. All right, thank you, and I'll hand back over to Antonio. And thank you for joining me today. Okay, thank you very much, Stephen, and thank you everyone for attending today's session. Um, we really do hope you found it to be very, very useful. Um, as I said, it is the first of the um, OCR Festival of A-Level Mathematics um, events, um, and as Stephen mentioned rightly just now, um, it all comes to an exciting end on Friday, um, the 9th of June, where we will have our um, Festival of A-Level Maths um, uh, in London. So we do hope um, to see you there if you haven't yet um, signed up to be a part of this. All right, so we've now come to an end um, of our session. I will be closing out. Um, so thanks again for joining us. Um, a full recording will be emailed to yourselves tomorrow. Um, and if you have any feedback regarding the session or if there are any questions that you um, didn't get to ask today, um, I do ask that you complete the short survey that will appear when you log out. Okay, so we will be ending the session if there are no more questions. Thank um, you very um, much. Um, Antonio? Yes. Um, one question has just come in. Uh, we don't specifically recommend a model, um, mainly because the new models will be coming out um, at, um, all the time. Um, but what I can say is that the, the two calculators we have been using um, extensively during the development process are the Casio FX991EX ClassWiz and the Texas Instrument TI Thirty X Pro, um, and I'll be demonstrating some of the things you can do on both of those calculators um, during um, the technology presentation that I'm doing on Wednesday. And another question uh, about the practice papers, and um, they're being written at the moment. Um, so the plan is to have the we will have the practice papers um, available for first assessment. Um, at least um, one, if not two, of the practice papers ready for the first assessment. Um, first assessment of the A-level, and the A-level maths is first assessed this, is first teaching this September, so September 2017. So it's first assessment in June 2018. Um, so we will have um, practice papers ready to be used as mocks in time for that. Uh, I hope that's answered your question. If there's nothing else, then I look forward to um, talking to you um, yes there's no statistical tables um, in the in the math um, a level they will be accessible um, via the calculator. Um, in terms of the content size, the um, um, it was um, Ofqual were very concerned of 
um, making sure that the A level was not um, a greater level of demand. Um, so, I mean, we have included its fixed content, um, so we couldn't cut any out, but the view was that it did match to the same content size, both for the pure and the applied, as students would be doing now across the C1 to 4 and two applied units. Um, possibly um, your concern about it looking to be considerably more than the two previous um, applied modules is not because there is more content, it's because we have included more exemplification um, because we are aware that moving into the reform, um, there are teachers that specialised in one of the applied units um, and are not very familiar with what's in the other um, applied um, aspects. So we have put a lot more exemplification in both the stats um, content and in the mechanics content based on exemplification in the statistics for those teachers that have traditionally always delivered mechanics and vice versa, more mechanics exemplification for those teachers that have traditionally only offered um, statistics. I can't see any more questions coming through. Um, so with that, um, feel free to drop any further questions um, through, to, through to me by email um, and we will um, do a, a response to all the questions that come in. Um, so good afternoon. and hope to um, be talking to you um, or possibly my colleague Will over the next few days. Okay, thank you very much, um, Stephen. So um, if there are no more questions, uh, I will be closing out again. As I mentioned earlier, um, the just to answer Melba's question about the conference, um, it is definitely going ahead. Um, so I really do hope to see you there on Friday. Um, and as I said, I will close out the session and a survey will pop up and if you have any um, feedback regarding today's session or any questions that you missed out um, on asking, um, please feel free to drop them in on that survey. All right, thank you very much for your time and um, we hope to see you at the remainder of the Festival of Mathematics um, webinars. Thank you and have a good afternoon.